If you are brand new to DaVinci Resolve or you're brand new to the audio side of DaVinci Resolve, I've got five tools that I just want you to be aware of because they're going to make your audio editing job a little bit easier. But before we get into that, if you're new to this channel, this is the first time you've ever seen one of my videos. Hi, my name's Jay. I'm a mixing and mastering engineer. And here on this channel, I teach the audio side of DaVinci Resolve. So if that's something that you want to learn more about, then I invite you to hang out, stick around, watch the video, maybe give it a like or leave me a comment. Let me know your thoughts afterwards. Maybe even subscribe to the channel. Who knows? All right, let's jump into DaVinci Resolve. Now we're actually spending the entire video in the edit page, which I know is kind of crazy for me, but the first tool I want to show you is the dialog leveler. And yes, it is available in the free version. All the tools I'm showing you today are available in the free version of DaVinci Resolve. The dialog leveler is kind of like an automatic compressor. It's going to lower the levels of the louder parts of your dialog, raise the levels of the quieter parts of your dialog so that you can kind of squash your dynamic range a little bit, which makes it easier to mix and makes it easier for people to understand what you're actually saying in your videos. Now, the dialog leveler can be found in the inspector and it can be found at the clip and the track level. What do I mean by that? Well, if we click on an audio clip in our timeline, we can come over onto the audio tab of our inspector and we come down and we see some tools. We got voice isolation, dialogue leveler, music remixer, pitch, all that stuff. Here is dialogue leveler. This is what I want to show you. If we deselect that clip and we just select our audio track, we see it again. It's already turned on. We've got a few different modes. We've got optimize for moderate levels, which is my personal favorite preset. We've got allow wider dynamics, which is going to, well, do exactly what it's say. It's going to allow for wider dynamics. It's not going to squash those louder parts of your dialogue as much. It's not going to lift the quieter parts as much. We've also got more lift for low levels, which means it's going to kind of leave the louder levels alone. And we've got lift soft whispery sources. So if you get really quiet in part of your video, it's going to lift that up. All you have to do is turn it on, choose your settings, choose your mode, and then you have some other options here. We can reduce loud dialogue. We choose whether or not we actually want to lower the louder parts of our dialogue. We can choose whether or not we want to lift the soft parts of our dialogue, and we can choose whether or not we want to use dialogue levelers background reduction. Now, word to the wise, if you are using other noise reduction on the same dialogue that you're using dialogue leveler on, then turn background reduction off. Below that, we can choose our output gain. So as we play this, we can just adjust our output gain like so. If you've ever felt completely lost when you open up the EQ in DaVinci Resolve's Fairlight page, or if you've opened it up and just blindly followed along with YouTube tutorials, but you don't really know what you're listening for or what you're actually doing, then this video is for you. Hi, my name's Jay. I'm a mixing and mastering engineer. So it doesn't completely get rid of the dynamic range, which is nice, but it does soften it a little bit or shorten it a little bit. So it's a little bit easier to understand me and you're not constantly being thrown off by the changes in volume in my natural voice. The next tool I want to show you is normalization. This is really, really important. And it's the first thing that I do when I'm going into the audio side of any video that I'm working on, whether it's my own or a client's. What normalization does is it reads our audio, it listens to our audio, and it finds out how loud it is, and then it finds out how much it needs to adjust our volume in order to get to the loudness that we want. And again, super easy to do. All we have to do is select all the audio clips that we want to normalize, which in this case is going to be all of them. We're going to right click and we're going to hit normalize audio levels. And we're gonna be left with some settings that we want to adjust. We have normalization mode. There's a whole bunch to choose from. In most cases, I am always going to use this BS1770-4. It's kind of the most accurate and modern algorithm. It's used by a lot of professional platforms. So this is kind of a safe one to stick with. You also have some platform specific ones like Disney 2.0, Disney 5.1, which is Disney surround sound, YouTube, Netflix, but I am pretty much always going to choose this 1770-4. So we'll select that and then we have to select a couple other things. Our target level is minus one dBTP. That's decibels true peak. I think that's what that stands for. I could be wrong. We're going to go with it. And this minus one means we're basically limiting our audio. It's only going to adjust our levels to the point 
where our highest peak is touching minus one. Our target loudness is minus 14 LKFS, which is basically the perceived loudness of our audio. Uh, minus 14 is what you should be aiming for if you're editing for YouTube which I am right now. So minus 14 LKFS. And below target loudness, we have set level. This is very, very, very important. So pay attention. If we choose independent, the normalization tool is going to read each audio clip independently, hence the name, and it's going to try and get each audio clip to that target loudness, or at the very least, the target level independently, which means if you have one clip that's kind of super loud and another clip that's a little bit quieter. It's now going to make this one still super loud and then this one super loud. Independent is really good on like sound effects. If you have multiple sound effects going on the same track and you want to normalize each sound effect independently, then I would choose independent. But for dialogue, we want to choose relative. Why is that? Well, it's because relative is going to read all of the clips that I've selected as a whole. It's basically going to treat it as one individual clip and it's going to raise all of those clips the same amount so that I don't have a part of my dialogue that's really, really loud and then a part that's supposed to be quieter, but now it's really, really loud and it's just gonna be jumping all over the place and it's gonna sound really unnatural and it's gonna be horrible. We want everything to remain natural sounding and so we're gonna choose relative and we're gonna hit normalize and you see my waveform has actually gotten bigger and if we actually select one of our clips and we come over into the inspector, you can see that this clip was raised to 11 if we select the next one, 11, the next one is 11, the next one, that was my keyframe tool, 11, and the last one is also 11. Next, we're gonna talk about audio sync, which is exactly what it sounds like. It is a tool that automatically syncs your audio. Why would you do this? Well, basically, audio sync is really good for multicam projects where maybe you have one main piece of audio and you want to make sure that all the video clips you have going along are synced up with that audio. So it's really good for like broadcast situations, multicam situations, stuff like that. It's also really, really good if you're like me and you record audio into your camera as scratch audio and then also your main audio into your computer because your computer has a professional audio interface and a professional microphone. That's what I have set up here in DaVinci Resolve. I've got my camera video, I've got my camera audio, this is my scratch audio, and then below that, this audio clip here is my main audio. This is the audio that I wanna end up using in my video. The problem is, if I play this, if you've ever felt, completely, you've ever felt completely lost when you lost open up, it's not synced up at all, it's completely all over the place. So I wanna make sure that I sync this audio clip here with the original scratch audio so that when I get rid of the scratch audio, it's synced up with my video. Does that make sense? To do that, all we have to do is select both of our audio tracks. We're gonna right click and we're gonna click auto align clips. And then from here, it's really, really simple. We can choose to synchronize using waveform or timecode. We're not gonna bother with timecode because if you're an internet content creator, you're probably not using timecode. And if you do use timecode, you probably already know about audio sync. So we're gonna sync doing waveform, which is a little bit less accurate. It's going to look at the waveforms of both of our audio clips and it's gonna try and match them up so that our audio is synced. Then we have this use track number dropdown box. And this is actually fairly simple. We are telling DaVinci Resolve, hey, we want you to use this audio track as kind of the main audio track. We want you to move all of the other clips to line up with this one. In this case, we are going to use track number one because track number one is my scratch audio and it's already synced up with my video. So we wanna move the clip on track number two to match up with that. If you hit this drop down box, you can also choose to use track number two, which would do the opposite. It would keep track number two's clip in place and it would shift track number one. And then there's mix and automatic, which I'm not entirely clear of. So we're just going to make sure that we know which clip we want to use as kind of our source clip. And that is the audio track that we're gonna choose. And then we're gonna hit sync and it's gonna analyze our content. This is a very, very long audio clip. It's like over 30 minutes long. So this is gonna take just a minute. But when it's done, you'll see we have our audio clips aligned and we need to double check. Always double check because it's not entirely 
perfect, you can see it's still a little bit off. It's so close, but it's a little bit off. So what do we do? Well, we're going to select audio clip number two, and we can use period and comma on our keyboard to shift our audio one frame forward or one frame back, period, shifts it one frame forward, comma, one frame back. So it looks like if we move forward one frame, we should be just about where we need to be. And we can come over to where our dialogue starts, go ahead and play that. If you've ever felt completely lost when you open up the EQ in DaVinci Resolve. And that sounds like it's good. It sounds a little bit weird because there's two audio clips going at the same time. So if we mute our scratch audio, and play that again. Fairlight like page, or if you've opened it up and just blindly followed along with you. Our audio is synced up with our video, and we can go ahead and get rid of our scratch audio, and we'll be good to go. All right, let's talk about the mixer. I know you've seen the mixer in the Fairlight page like a hundred times by now, but did you know that you can access almost that same mixer in the edit page? It's really, really easy. Just come up to the top right of DaVinci Resolve, click on Mixer, and boom, there you go. If for some reason you click on that and you see this, it's because if you hit these three dots here, you can choose between seeing meters, which will just kind of give you an overall idea of how loud your entire video is, or you can turn on your mixer and then you have full control. Now, you'll probably notice that the mixer doesn't look exactly the same as the one in the Fairlight page. For example, you don't have your EQ or your Dynamics window here. But if you come up to the top where it says FX EQ Dynamics, you can double click on effects and it'll open up the inspector and show you all of the audio effects that you have. You can double click EQ and get to your EQ. You can double click your dynamics and get to your compressor and your limiter and your noise gate and your expander. And then below that, you've got your panning window. And if you double click that, it's gonna open it up. You can even go into 3D space and then you can solo, you can mute and you can adjust your audio levels. So technically, theoretically, at least, you can do an entire mix right there in the edit page. I wouldn't do that. I would always do your full mix in the Fairlight page. The reason why I would have the mixer open in the edit page is because a lot of times while I'm mixing, I'll notice something's a little bit too loud or a little bit too quiet, and I will adjust the mixer accordingly. I'm basically doing my dry mix as I'm editing my video, so that way, by the time I get to the Fairlight page, I've got my dry mix done and I can jump into doing my EQ and my dynamics and making everything sound nice and pretty. All right, last but certainly not least, we're going to talk about fade handles. You probably already know what these are. If you mouse over a piece of audio, like this piece of music here, you're going to find a little white arrow at the very beginning and at the very end of your audio clip. And if you click on one of those arrows and you drag inward, you're going to create a fade. And I'm sure this goes without saying, but just in case to avoid any weird comments, if you drag in from the end of the clip, you're doing a fade out. If you drag in from the beginning of the clip, you're doing a fade in. And most people know about this. They know about the fade handles. They probably create fades all the time, but did you know that you can change the type of fade that you do? For example, this right here, this nice, pretty straight line here means that we're doing a linear fade. That means that the rate of volume reduction from the beginning of the fade to the end of the fade is constant. But if we mouse over this little white dot here and we drag it around, we can actually change the behavior of our fade. For example, if I drag that dot all the way over here, we're going to have a really steep drop off, a really quick drop off in volume at the beginning of the fade. And then it's going to get really gradual after that. If I did the opposite of that, there we go. It's going to be the opposite. We're going to have a very gradual fade at the beginning, and then it's going to drop off really quickly at the end. Now, again, I know these are very, 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 very beginner friendly tips, but just in case, let me know in the comments, are there any of these tips that you didn't know? Any of these tools that you weren't aware of? Let me know in the comments. If you watch this and you were like, like, I already know all of this stuff. Show me some more advanced stuff. Well, you're in luck because I just dropped a 40 minute long masterclass on how to use the EQ in the Fairlight page. And it's 100% free. You can check that out right here. And until next time, don't forget to go out and make stuff. Thanks for watching.